Hi, this is Richard from Torpedo. I'm sitting here with Rob Sheff from the Daniel Surf Life Saving. We're going to do a quick run through of the weather, just of the different uh, weather sites, and take a look at what is facing us for race day in Torpedo this Sunday. So Rob has competed in in every swim run I think that we have had. Yeah. Hey, Rob, he's um he's come on the on the podium of the mixed in the first race, and then he was the third men's team. In Cape Town in November, and he came on the podium again, uh, second place in in Wilderness. So he's got some got some good experience, and then he's also a local local lifesaver from the route that we're passing at Ladonna. So he's got a good idea of what we're facing uh, on Sunday. Yeah, how's it, guys? So if you have a look here, this is uh, off of Wind Guru at the moment, so you can get a good idea of what uh, the conditions are for the weekend. Um, as you can see based on the swell, there is a ground swell running and a wind swell running concurrently. Um, what's going to be the wind swell is a southeast swell, so that doesn't affect the Atlantic side too much. That will be wrapping into False Bay. Uh, what we're focusing on here is the ground swell, which is currently looking about 2.2, 2.3 meters at 12 seconds. Uh, it's quite a southwesterly swell. There's quite a bit of west in it. It's about 235 degrees. So what that does mean is that a lot of the spots are going to be faced with a wave of some sorts uh, coming in and coming out. Um, you're going to be looking at Sandy Bay quite sheltered at the beginning, a couple of uh, couple of little waves possibly on offer. So what sort of, I mean, what, what sort of, how many foot, what sort of wave would you think you're talking getting out in Sandy Bay? San Look, Sandy Bay is never, never too big. It's usually a bit of a shore break. It doesn't break too far out. You're probably looking at a two foot wave at most. So that'll be quite a nice start to the route. Um, I don't think the guys will struggle too much with that. Coming in at the exit point, you just got to time it with a surge and make sure you land on the rock. Remember the muscles are your friends on those rocks. You want to avoid the kelp. Kelp is slippery. Um, hitting Lundudno, there's definitely going to be a bit more swell. Uh, very similar conditions to what was at this morning. And when I was at Lundudno, it was about three foot with an odd four foot set coming through. Um, for those of you who don't speak in feet, that's about head high or just overhead if you were standing up. Um, so there's definitely a bit of a wave at lands to, to be made the most of. Uh, just yeah, just while we're on Lundudno, so every swim of the race is compulsory except for Lundudno. Lundudno is, is quite a feared swim for those that are taking part that aren't that come to on the ocean. So Ladonna has got an optional run round. So you can run around as a 15 minute penalty box on the beach for those of you that are hearing about a head height wave and being pretty nervous. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a bit there's also quite a bit of water moving around at Ladonna, so choose your lines carefully. There's definitely some rips pulling out to sea and you want to try avoid swimming into those. You'll just tie yourself out. Um, the next swims at Odakral shouldn't be too affected by, by the running ground swell. It's coming out of deep water and you're jumping straight into deep water, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, the next swim across uh, Buckhoven, also same thing. You're not really uh, at too much risk. There is a bit of water moving in the kelp, but it's not going to be a breaking wave. Uh, Camps Bay, there's definitely a shore break, and that's the one you probably want to be the most careful of in terms of uh, anything like injuries or whatever, because you are coming out of very shallow water onto a two foot crunching shore break. So coming back in, just be careful if you're body surfing that wave, just make sure that you're not landing on the sandbank and uh, popping a shoulder or something to that effect. So just, um, so we Thursday mid morning, tomorrow at midday, everyone's gonna get a, a Google Earth fly through and everything that Rob is not talking about, I'm gonna do a fly through and we're gonna be looking at this on a Google Earth map. Um, to give you a bit more context, but just uh, as you were talking about that, I just had to jump in. You know, remember that this is this is definitely not a triathlon. When you're coming into transition, there's no white line across the road that you have to dismount at a certain point. This is racing in nature. Um, there's, there's waves, there's rocks, there's rips, there's there's currents. So please, please be absolutely aware of your surroundings. Don't just be head down racing. You have to be you're in the ocean. There's waves. Make sure you're aware of what's happening around you. Yeah. No. Absolutely. There's a saying that it's not always the fastest racer who's going to win the race. It's sometimes uh, the smartest. So be aware of the conditions and make sure you maximise them. Um, in in the final swim from Clifton, again there might be a bit of a shore break at Clifton, but um, that fourth beach is usually very sheltered. So I don't think that that'll be a factor. 
So that's the swell forecast. It's not looking too crazy. It's looking quite nice. For those of you that uh, experienced the first year and last year, it'll be uh, very much within your, your capabilities. Those who are going out at, at the first time, just uh, enjoy it. It's gonna be gonna be lots of fun. Then getting to the elephant in the room, the South Easter, the ah. Cape Doctor, the Black South Easter maybe. No, no, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna be yeah, it's pumping through on Sunday morning. Yeah, there's considerable considerable wind. It's nothing that we're not used to. It's a typical uh, Cape Town summer's day. Uh, the southeast in full force. What's interesting is that the water temperature is going to be definitely made colder by the southeast. As you can see at the start of Sunday here, as we go through, this would be at the end of the race now. So by Sunday afternoon, you can see that the wind's really pumping. Um, leading up to it, not going to be too crazy. If we just scroll in here and have a look at Saturday leading up to it, you can see that that's where the wind starts to pick up. Um, as the day goes on, it becomes southerly and becomes more southeast in the evening and overnight. So that brings with it the cold water. Um, hopefully, at the moment, it's quite warm. But Do you want to hazard a guess as to what they can expect? Sure. It depends on when and how strong this wind pulls through overnight. If it pumps the whole night, then we're going to be in for very cold weather. Last week, we had sort of 8 degree, 9 degree oceans. Where, after where the is week. that? Sandy Bay and Dutton. After a week of southeast. And now it's been uh, light northwest and uh, westerlies at the start of this week, so it's actually warmed up quite nicely. It's now sitting at about 14 or 15 degrees. Um, sure, yeah. So it sounds like there's, <laughs> there's, there's a large window of, of, of a large variety of what it, what it could be, but absolutely. I think if everyone can expect a very cold ocean and maybe just a good, a good little hint that if you've got a warm head, it helps you a lot. So it's not too late to head over to... Um, a surf shop and get yourself a little surfing hoodie to stop that ice cream headache. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's what we're looking at. If the forecast stays the way it is, it's still a couple of days out, but it's looking like it's going to be blowing overnight. So I do expect it to be cold, maybe not nine degrees, but certainly well below what it's sitting at at the moment. Um, and if it really blows, then yeah, you can expect single digits. Um, moving on to the race, the nice thing about the southeast is we are moving in the same direction as it. So it's going to be a tailwind um, for some of the route and a bit of a crosswind for the rest of it. Uh, also, it's an offshore wind on the Atlantic, so that means that the waves tend to be more dumpy and steeper. Um, something to just be aware of, especially at places like uh, Lindudno and Camps Bay. But just looking at the general, the general soil energy on that day, so... We've got soil energy of, um, of just over a thousand, and there's, we, we've got two, we've got three different lines that we use in the day. We either use A line, which is the route that we plan, or if the soil is too big, we're going to B line or cancel it if it's, if it's too big. And our, our marker in the sand is that if the soil energy is over, was under 3,000, then it's all in play for A line, and so we're sitting on, on just over a third of that 3,000 soil energy. So it doesn't seem that the swell is going to be, you know, going to be that much of the problem, breaking waves. It's, it's more this, this southeaster wind, which is going to make potentially make it very um, unpleasant on the swimming segments. Correct. So you're going to have a bit of chop, especially what you also get on this route is you get a bit of glare in the morning. Um, when you're breathing on your right because the sun's rising over the right and you're going to have the wind blowing into you on the right. So if you're a person who breathes a lot on their right hand side, expect, uh, expect a bit of wind in the face and a bit of glare. Um, so just make sure that, uh, that you're prepared for that and uh, you know, try, to, try to utilize conditions as best as possible. Having said that, tailwind on the runs is quite, quite nice um, to help you, help you along. And I don't think it's going to be wind that no one's experienced before you know 20 knots 25 knots equates to about uh, 40 45 k's an hour so it's significant but it's your typical cape town summer um, the other thing is that the southeast tends to be uh, quite sheltered once you get to uh, past camp space so the last segment of the race should be quite sheltered from the southeast and, and there's also a very good possibility that that section from odacrol to cozy bay especially the first sort of a couple of hundred meters out, you know, you're in an extremely sheltered bay. The southeast only hits the sea, you know, half a K out. So yeah. So that should also be very good. And and what we're really hoping for, and this is what we've experienced in the past, is that a strong southeast just makes the visibility absolutely brilliant. Well that's exactly the next point is it's gonna be in all likelihood very, very clear waters, excellent visibility, 
um, you're going to get to look around and uh, just experience the sheer beauty of the route, which is really, really cool. Cool, Rob. Well, I wish you all the best on, on Sunday. Rob's going to be racing with the other Rob from Ladunda, and they're going to be going all out to try and upstage the fast triathletes, a lot of them from Stellenbosch that are coming out to race. So it's going to be, be a great showdown, and we are hoping that the Southeaster stays slightly away and lands a bit later. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for your time, mate.